and, it, and, and that would be Sterling Marlin. He's got those 10 laps on the tires, but the real surprise is the man running in second, Ricky Rudd. He did not pit. We're pretty sure he got his lap back when his teammate, Dale Jarrett, blew up. He raced back to the caution, got his lap back. Well, we got one to go, and uh, we'll see about those 10 laps on those tires, how it plays out. Cause I wouldn't be very happy about that. Well, you know, 10 laps on your tires is one thing. About 15 cars behind you were fresh tires as oh, the yeah. other. Yeah, and i tell you something else. You better start cleaning them up, too, Sterling. You better wipe them off there and get them cleaned up, bud, because that stuff, is just debris all over the racetrack. That's what I worry about, running over something, cutting a tire down after that wreck. Go, hey, Dick, what you got? His pit stop was, Matt Kenseth's pit stop was not the best. It's the first one he's had all day that wasn't just perfect. Justin Nutstead, who joined this team new in this year, tripped. He's the front tire carrier. He, Kenseth came in first, came out fourth. Meanwhile, Robbie Reiser has been telling the gang, down here, don't worry about it. Just keep your composure. Everything's going to be fine. Well, Dick... Ward Burton has been off and on pit road at least seven times. They've checked the toe in. Ward said it feels like the steering wheel wants to turn to the right as we get ready to go green. Green flag. Sterling Marlin and Ricky Rudd, who did not pit, are the race leaders. All I know is if I'd hit the wall as many times as Ward has, I'd be turning, and everything in my car would be turned around. This is edgy, edgy racing, boys. And when they start restart like this, all grouped up, slick track, low air. Everybody want to get a lap back. This is when you hold your breath. Matt Kenseth on fresh tires at 17, coming hard on the outside of lap car Dave Blaney. Well, by the way, you tug on those belts a little bit right along now, too, because you just know that uh, this is a little icy dicey time here comes those fresh tires jeff green in that 30 car to the outsider ricky Rudd. it's a battle for second he has his sights set on sterling marlin now in that 40 car i don't really think Rudd was all that good you know to get a lap down and using pit strategy fatback did a good job of getting him in the getting him up there in the front we probably elected track position may be a, a little bit of importance here i think so right now fatback's his crew chief by the way Everybody on those fresh tires right now, back down to the white line, running around the bottom for a few laps, so they get a few laps on these tires. You might look back in there and see if you see anything burning, because I see flames. That's Jeff Gordon. Something's burning, up the burning track. boys. Something's burning. He's up to seventh with Tony Stewart and but Johnny Benson. Listen, methodically, from way back in 30, whatever place 30 it 30. was, methodically, one step at a time, I'm there. That's what he can do. That's what that team can do. That's why he wins the championship. Something I once heard you call aggressive patience. Oh, he got it. It's like I always said, Lord, give me patience, but give it to me now. <laughs> got a battle for the lead, guys. Jeff Green in that 30 car. By Sterling Marlin in the 40, headed off into one and two. Fresh tires, fresh tires. Woo. Sterling almost caught a piece of that outside wall. Well, now here's Rudd making the run. Well, it's like, a, it's it's like a drag race here, but the momentum off of the top is what you want. That's why you get up there. You get such a great run off that corner. Down low, you kind of bog her down. Get up high, and she's freewheeling. It looked like John Force coming up out of that corner. These views from the core cam hovering overhead. North Carolina Speedway. Sterling Marlin on the 40 now, We've about five laps after this restart, which is about 15 laps on his tires. He's already starting to run up to the top of the racetrack. Stayed on the bottom in one and two, down in three and four. A little wider sweeping corner goes up to the top. Well, let me tell you, as the sun starts to set, as the sun starts to go down, that turn will get a little shade on it, and you might be able to hook the bottom in one and two. That is such a great shot to see those cars slide about a turn two and almost nick that wall. You catch it with the gas. I know it's hard to believe. You don't want to touch the brake or you'll hit the wall. It's a controlled slide. It is. You got to get it right up there and right at the right time. You got to nail it. Watch the edge of that wall, folks, as they come off that corner and just slide right up there. It's called finesse. You know, these guys got a lot of finesse. Matt Kenseth, four second, make that third place. 
And this battle for sixth. We have some combatants back here that are just lurking in the background, waiting for the next thing, next shoe to drop. Jeff Gordon right around the bottom of the racetrack. Rusty Wallace up top. I don't know, Daryl. It's hard to lurk at 160 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Rusty ran the high groove one and two. A little more momentum off the corner. Was able to hold that position down the back stretch. Here they go again. Gordon to the bottom. Caution is on the speedway. Michael Walsh oh, has stopped at the entrance to the garage. That's the reason for the caution, because pit road is blocked. So at lap 180, we have the fourth caution flag of the day. RPM, zero. The interval keeps changing. <laughs> he's, he's not moving. Everybody else is. That's the interval from there to his car for the ride home. <laughs> Caution is out. We'll be back to the Subway 400. The Subway 400 on Fox is brought to you by Beechwood Aged Budweiser with a crisp, clean, and refreshing taste known only to the king of beers. The Caution is out here at Rockingham in the Subway 400. And bad news for Jeff Gordon. Look from Elliott Sather's in-car cam as Gordon slides into his pit. Wrong way in. Man, I looked down and I saw him backing up. I couldn't figure out what happened. All that work, all that working his way up to the getting the top 10 there, and now it's all for naught. Now what happened here, though, Elliott Sadler is a lap down. L cars that are lapped down are supposed to wait to the second time, but what NASCAR called was a quickie caution. The racetrack was not in trouble. All they were trying to do is get Michael Waltrip's car off pit road. When they call quickie caution, everybody can pit whether you're on the lead lap or a lap down or better. And I bet Gordon wasn't expecting anybody to be in that pit box. And the uh, wrecker, big teeth of that new international on that grill, and uh, he's been pushed back to the garage area as you look from his back bumper cam, Michael Waltrip getting pushed into the garage. So a look at the pit summary from that caution flag stop. Jeff look, Green lost three spots, Sterling right Marlin won. That's the key and Jeff right Gordon there. lost 15 positions on that. Well, the difference is he was up in the seventh or eighth place. Now he's at the back of the pack. So, And what we have here, where you came in, where you went out, the actual stop in pit road time is from where you came on the pit road, including the stop, all the way to the exit. And you see the, the difference there, about 30 seconds. Matt? And Mike, I'm down here in the 36th pit with Richie Newmore. New first stop. He made a lot of stops on the previous caution to fix that balance. How's the race car now? Well, we uh, broke the nose skirt off, and that hurt us right at the start, so it made us tight. Uh, front end was sliding, and we got that fixed, loosened it up. Now we got the nose skirt fixed up, and uh, m and Pontiac's pretty good right there. He was all caught up in a bunch of traffic, so it really couldn't go. We made another adjustment, did some two tires just to get some track position and try to get back up there. Where we, uh, car's good. We'll see. Further up pit road, Rusty Wallace only took on four tires, no adjustments, although the car was a little tight in the center of the corner. They borrowed the front tire changer from Dale Jarrett's car, Mike Trower, so Billy Wilbur can stay on top of the pit box. Matt Kenseth will lead them down for this restart. Jeff Green, Sterling Marlin, Ricky Rudd, Ricky Craven are the top five. Jeff Gordon will restart 21st of 22 cars on the lead lap. Matt Kenseth trying to clear that lap car. Mark Martin, his teammate in the sixth car. Just remember, cautions breed cautions. That's all I know. Buddy, you got to hold your breath here for a few laps. Leaders picking through lap traffic that includes Mark Martin, Jimmy Johnson, Dave Blaney, and Elliot Sadler. To Dick Bergman. Matt Kenseth had a flawless pit stop that time, Mike, and there was absolutely no conversation about whether or not he was going to pit. In the past yellow flag, Kenseth thought maybe it would be a good idea to stay out. He was in the lead. He didn't want to lose that, but Riser made sure he came in. Kenseth saw the advantage of fresh tires, and he decided himself, let's make this pit stop. To Steve. Chief Tommy Baldwin from Warburton. Tommy, you guys have been off and on pit road six 
seven times. Tell us about the damage to the car. Uh, something's still wrong with it. I don't know. We put on a set of tires after that, after taking the lead there, and the car bottomed out once, and he hit the wall and messed up the suspension. But uh, hopefully we get a couple more cautions to get to work on this cat dodge. It's a shame, too. We had a good race car all weekend and uh, get ready to race for the last half of the race here. But I don't know if we're going to get to it. Also, guys, Sterling Marlins was on pit road, took four tires, no chassis adjustments. Seems right like Ward, Ward has his most problems on the restarts. Uh, the car just takes off, goes down in turn one, just takes off, goes up, hits the wall. Matt Kenseth, three quarters of a second up to the lead as we close in on halfway. Sixth yeah. place battle. All a gaggle of cars, all gaggled up. Tony Stewart in the 20, Rusty Wallace in the two. They've been battling each other, I think, for about 180 laps. Johnny Benson in the 10 car, remember earlier, thought he had a flat left rear, lost a lot of ground. Now he's back up there in the seventh position. They tested here, so you'd think, you know, they. I know they worked hard on race setup. you think he'd be good for the race. I think he and James Ince together have not finished worse than 10th here. Well, guys, I'm here with Michael Waltrip on the wrong side of the wall. What happened out there? Something happened to the engine. We're not quite sure yet. It's a disappointing day. Bobby Labonte swerved up in front of me, and I hit him early in the race and bent my fender. And then uh, missed that huge wreck on the back stretch, shot right through the middle of that. So that was cool. Then right after that, the engine messed up. And we're not really sure right now exactly what might have happened to it. You made some comment on the radio coming in that Jeff Green owes you one. What was that in reference to? I just, uh, it's my 500 start, and I can't win it, and he's my high school buddy. We went to high school together and grew up together, and since I can't win, he owes me a win. I want him to go out there and win this race. Uh, Brian Scheimer, Todd Hayes, and those guys last night, the four-man bobsled, and that was inspirational watching Brian win after so long. Congratulations to Jeffrey Bodine and everybody on the American four-man bobsled team last night. Today was set up to be a fun day. We had a good car. I think we were going to run well, and we just messed it up from the start. Congratulations on the 500th start nonetheless. Uh, memorable, though, for all the wrong reasons. Michael Walters' 500th start. Commemorative shirts and hats and a piece of the rock. I made my 500 start in 1990. It's uh, 12 years ago. I don't know if I'd have towed that one. Well, I just come to my just I just thought of it. <laughs> Jeff Gordon has had a day oh like the Nasdaq of late. <laughs> you know, he started 33rd, he climbed up into the top ten. Got up to 10th, got himself back to 22nd on this restart, and is now 18th. But I know it's a lot easier said than done, but I think they have to go back to the original strategy at the beginning of the race. Let's take them one at a time. We still have almost 200 laps to go. We can still get back there. Well, he can, and he's just been really, really cautious. I, I kind of keep one eye on him, and he's not forcing himself. Uh, you're not forcing the issue at all. Ricky Craven started on the pole led a good part of this race, drifted back as far as eighth place, but he's a top five car, runs in fifth right now. Michael Waltrip credited Jeffrey Bodine for the U.S. bobsled team's fortunes in Salt Lake City. It was about a dozen years ago when Bodine watched the Winter Olympics and said, those bobsled drivers, they need somebody who can handle the G-forces. I want to try that. Yeah. And so he got a ride in a bobsled and he learned two things. One, it's harder than it looks. 